Good morning, good to see you again. So we are going to start today in Genesis chapter 40. But before we begin, we'll do a little bit of a review. And before we do the little review, we'll open with a word of prayer. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for watching over us during the night as we slept. And this morning, we pray that you would help this Bible study to be productive and um, really fruitful for everyone listening to it or watching it. And we pray that you would keep us throughout this day, throughout this week. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. So we were in Genesis chapter 39. And I'll read the last few verses of chapter 39 to sort of um, get anyone up to speed that wasn't able to listen to last uh, week's Bible study, right? So, when his master heard the story his wife told him, saying, This is how your slave, Joseph, treated me. He burned with anger. Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. So, Joseph's boss accuses him, um, has it, Joseph's boss's wife, accuses Joseph of raping her or trying to rape her, right? So Joseph's boss is so upset with this that he puts Joseph into prison, in fact. But while Joseph was there in prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in the prison, and he was made responsible for all that was done there. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care, because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. So, again, Joseph is being faithful in the small things, and God is, is caring for him, and God is watching over him and protecting him. And as Joseph is faithful in the small things, people kind of see that and appreciate that and put him in charge of even greater things. So let's start reading chapter 40 of Genesis. Sometime later, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt offended their master. The king of Egypt, Pharaoh, was angry with his two officials, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker, and put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard, in the same prison where Joseph was confined. The captain of the guard assigned them to Joseph, and he attended them. After they had been in custody for some time, each of the two men, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt, who were being held in prison, had a dream that same night, and each dream had a meaning of its own. When Joseph came to them the next morning, he saw that they were dejected. So he asked Pharaoh's officials, who were in custody with him in his master's house, Why do you look so sad today? We both had dreams, they answered, but there is no one to interpret them. Then Joseph said to them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me your dreams. So the chief cupbearer told Joseph his dream. He said to him, In my dream I was in a vine in front of me. I saw a vine in front of me. Excuse me. And on the vine were three branches. As soon as it budded, it blossomed, and its clusters ripened into grapes. Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes, squeezed, and into Pharaoh's cup, and put the cup in his hand. This is what it means. 
Joseph said to him, The three branches are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your position, and you will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand, just as you used to do when you were his cupbearer. But when all goes well with you, remember me and show me kindness. Mention me to Pharaoh and get me out of this prison. I was forcibly carried off from the land of the Hebrews, and even here I have done nothing to deserve being put in a dungeon. When a chief baker saw that Joseph had given a favorable interpretation, he said to Joseph, I too had a dream. On my head were three baskets of bread. In the top basket were all kinds of baked goods for Pharaoh, but the birds were eating them out of the basket on my head. This is what it means, Joseph said. The three baskets are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift off your head and impale your body on a pole, and the birds will eat away your flesh. Now the third day was Pharaoh's birthday, and he gave a feast for all his officials. He lifted up the heads of the chief cupbearer and the chief baker in the presence of his officials. He restored the chief cupbearer in his position, so that he once again put the cup into Pharaoh's hand. But he impaled the chief baker, just as Joseph had said to them in his interpretation. The chief cupbearer, however, did not remember Joseph. He forgot him. So the interpretation of dreams, or how do we see prophecy today? Well, kind of a very neat answer to that would be, um, I'd say typically... Um, for instance, as kind of a, a Lutheran answer, kind of typical Lutheran answer would be that people who are prophesying are people who share the promises of God, the promises of Jesus Christ, that he will return one day, he will restore all of creation, he will judge the living and the dead, and he will raise all the saints to newness of life, and they will have eternal life in him. And that someday Jesus will return, right? And that we will live with him in his kingdom for all of eternity. That would be a form of prophecy, we would say. We are sharing the good news, the good things to come in Jesus Christ, and that is prophetic, right? Also, I would say this. We meet a lot of people in our daily lives, in our daily walks, um, or some people, I'll say some, right, who maybe share dreams that are um, really compelling, that are very um, moving or intense in some ways, and they want to tell us about these dreams and share that experience with us. And in some cases, these people feel that this dream was from God that God or Jesus was trying to tell them something very powerful, that God the Father or God the Son, Jesus, was trying to tell them something powerful, or God the Holy Spirit was, right? And they're, they're telling us about this dream, and it's so moving and compelling, and so on and so forth. And we don't have to tear that dream down. We believe them. We take them at their word. We don't try to um, act destructively about that dream or that feeling that they're having as long as that dream or that feeling is not um, blatantly going against God's word, right? Or is blatantly going against the teaching of Christianity. Um, Or is, um, as long as that dream is not teaching them to do something or telling them to do something, right? and their interpretation that is destructive or harmful to themselves or other people, okay? So we don't try to tear down what they feel they were told by God or saw in that dream, as long as it's not heretical, right? But at the same time, um, you probably wouldn't create a new teaching out of a dream. You probably wouldn't create a doctrine out of a dream. 
In fact, when the church creates a doctrine or a teaching, they usually do it based on multiple scripture readings from the Hebrew scriptures. So not just one verse, or even two verses, but five, six, seven verses throughout the Hebrew scriptures or the New Testament, right? Or they build that off of um, also, yes, this seems to be consistent within the early church. And St. Augustine sort of built on that teaching. And Martin Luther sort of built on that teaching of St. Augustine, right? And we kind of see this over and over again within the Hebrew Scriptures and the Greek New Testament. So they have multiple verses to go to. They have multiple um, authoritative early church figures, maybe the disciples of Paul or Peter or someone like Thomas Aquinas or St. Augustine or Martin Luther, and say, yes, this is consistent with our doctrine, with our teaching as Christians. Okay, This is historical Orthodox Christianity. Small c Catholic teaching. Okay, This is in line with Scripture. This is in line with the creeds. This is in line with early church doctrine. This seems to be very consistent throughout the teaching of the church. And that's how we sort of... Um, we sort of strengthen doctrine or doctrine is formed, teaching is formed. That's how we address things. And those are our reference points. We have to be careful with um, creating doctrine off of, this is what an early church father said one time, just one early church father, or this is one single verse from scripture, or this is one dream that someone had. We really shouldn't be building doctrine or teaching off of that. We should have multiple reference points from Scripture. We should have multiple um, kind of reference points throughout the history of the church. This is pretty consistent with what we have always taught, believed, and confessed. It shouldn't be based off of just a single dream, okay, or um, a single quote. All right, or one verse, kind of taken out of context. But at the same time, if someone comes to you and they, they have had a dream or they really feel compelled by a single quote or something like that, don't tear it down. Don't belittle that, right? Um, take them at their word. Put it in the best possible light. But at the same time, we don't want to probably form an entire... Um, teaching off of that or new teaching, okay? So, again, Joseph is being faithful. Joseph is um, listening to God. Joseph is being watched over by God. He's being protected. And God will continue to watch over him and protect him. And we'll see more of that next week in the Bible study to come as we open up in Genesis chapter 41. Why don't we end um, here today and we'll open up in Genesis 41 next week. Why don't we pray to close today? Heavenly Father, thank you for letting us get together today and read about what God, what you have done through Joseph and um, to remember that Jesus Christ loves us all, that he has died for us on the cross, and that he has been raised again on the third day, that he rose again on the third day, and that he will come again to judge the living and the dead and restore all of creation and raise all the saints to life. We give Jesus glory. We give the Father glory. We give the Holy Spirit glory today. We pray that you protect us this week watch over us, and help us to return safely to these Bible studies next week and to do all the work that you have for us to do in the meantime. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. Okay, see you guys.